motorcycle adventure Dirt Bike TV, supported proudly by Adventure Spec in the UK, Rally Raid Products, Giant Loop in the United States, Adventure Moto in Australia, Pirelli Tyres, Motel Oils, RK Chains and Australian Adventure Bike Magazine. been a long time coming but we're back on the Honda Africa Twins, an iconic bike whose dirt origins are firmly rooted in four Paris to Dakar wins when most of you weren't even born. Production kicked off in 1988 with the current model starting its life in 2015. Reliability and good dirt handling are its strengths but suspension was on the soft side. The model is coming towards the end of its life, but Honda have come out swinging with the 2022 1100 version. Off-road suspension improvements are the big one for me, but many riders will love the innovative TFT touchscreen. For our first impressions ride, we're heading down to Sydney Harbour where Clubby is chasing a spectacular shot of the bikes on twilight with the harbour bridge in the background. It's a good opportunity to get a feel for the bikes. They say first impressions count and we're not disappointed. Both bikes do city traffic comfortably and capably. Welcome to our Africa Twin Test. We've now been on the bikes probably about an hour. Clubby's got the Adventure Sports, which has the DCT transmission. I've got a standard Adventure um, Africa Twin. Still getting my head around the electronics. Um, this switch block, honestly, the first time you see it, it looks like you need to be a rocket scientist to work it out. Um, but I'm slowly getting there, and in fact, um, once you understand how the switch block works, it's actually quite good but at the end of the day we're not filling with traction control settings right now what we're doing is I'm giving you a feel for the bike those first impressions and boy oh boy do I love this engine it um, it really pulls solidly from about 1800 revs and um, as usual we don't uh, read up on the specs before we ride the bikes um, unless it's something crucial in terms of performance we need to understand uh, to get the best out of the bike but um, yeah the thing that strikes me is the engine it's just beautiful um, it's really meaty power um, and comes on strong if you wanted to I mean I, I went over a speed hump and just gave it a little bit more stick and uh, front wheel lifted into the air. The other thing I like about the bike is um, the way it just turns. It's got a lovely light feel to it and I'm really looking forward to, to getting this bike on the dirt. It does, I guess my impressions are because it steers so beautifully and the engine is so willing from low down and you've got a comfortable seated position, it actually does this suburban traffic very well. Like I took off then at about 12,000, uh, sorry, God, 12,000, 1200 revs and uh, the bike just, you know, took up the load I was putting on it on the clutch. Oh, where's he going? I thought he was going to go left there. Uh, the finish on the bike is outstanding. Everything um, looks beautifully made. And the TFT screen works well. It's clear. Probably feels a little dated compared to what I've been riding lately, but not too much. Activation of the controls I find is um, really good. The clutch uptake is spot on. Um, yeah, very impressed. 
I'm, I'm still got to work out these functions here on the dash. The um, EB is engine braking, T is traction control, P is power, I think, and um, and obviously ABS is on road at the moment in our urban setting. The safety feature for the bike is both the indicators remain constantly on the forward facing ones as you're riding and then just blink uh, when you turn the indicators on. Clubby's getting his head round DCT I've had no experience whatsoever with that. Um, his bike comes with electronic suspension, um, electronically adjustable suspension. I'll be interested when we get in the dirt how these two compare. Um, I'm already, you know, the, God, here I am prejudging things, but I already get a sense that the suspension of this bike in the dirt will be pretty good. Um, it's probably a little bit early days yet, but it just has that feel about it. Mate, where's your bloody gear? Someone stole your gear lever. I don't need it. I'm saving weight, mate. I'm saving weight. Wait, are you got a, oh, you got a clutch? No, that's a parking brake, actually. <laughs> you don't want to pull it on while you're riding. Rum. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's a parking brake. Get out of here. Well, I've never seen that. Gearless. He's gearless. Yeah. Tell me. All right, you just press it. Like a Formula One car. All right, you just. All right. Yeah, that'll be an interesting ride when I get on that. I like the ergos on this bike um, for my height. And as I always tell you, it's 178 centimetres or 5 foot 10. This, the ergos on this bike in the seated position are really good. Um, it's quite a neutral position. I'm, I'm not feeling like I'm being pulled forward or pushed back. It's just spot on. And down we go into the harbour. Ah, there. How's that for a reveal? I know a lot of Americans like these Africa twins. So if you're watching, there's our famous coat hanger, the Harbour Bridge. And Clubby's sneaking down, I think. He's going to find a spot where he can get a picture of it. There's our opera house. Okay, you've got a spot here. Yeah. Eh? But it said sunset it wasn't until 4.50, I think. Alright. It's got to be a while before the lights start showing up. Alright. So they reckon it's impossible to stall this bike. Okay. That transmission. And mate, I was doing it down, before I got to your place, down at the end of one of the streets, just the slowest possible yeah. circles that I could. Yeah. And it doesn't. Yeah. You're, like, you're, just, you're forever reaching for a clutch lever just you know, to save yourself. Yeah. I'll be really interested in that. I mean, I'm... I've got to say, I'm loving this bike. I love the way it handles the urban traffic. It, um, yeah. you got this beautiful engine. It's so um, full, fulsome in power, right down low. You know, yeah. for about fifteen hundred. Uh -huh. And um, and I tell you, the other thing I like the way it turns. It does, eh? Yeah, I mean, going around that roundabout there, you yeah. just turn and it just yeah. locks in. That's right. That's it's right, beautiful handling, and I have a sneaking suspicion, even just going around on the suburbs here. The suspension seems good. Yeah, it's it, straight it, out of the it box. It feels soft. At all. No, it, not at all. No, it seems oh. like. It. There's the Harbour Bridge from underneath. Luna Park. Cubby's got his shots. And we're heading home. Anyway, good opportunity to have a look at these lights. I'm like the dark and the 
the clouds on a rainy day Oh, the fire in the hills and I'm headed your way Oh, it's all right, baby, don't be afraid I'm just giving heads up on my dangerous ways Okay, we've got our head around this traction control now so I've got full power on. Yeah, it just had a slight bottom of the shock then. Um, not the shock before. I've been waiting for this all week. Time to hit the dirt. My first job is to get this suspension dialed in for how I intend to ride this bike. My standard Africa Twin has fully adjustable suspension, that is compression, rebound and preload, and adjustments can be easily made out in the bush. It's no coincidence that Clubby and I have chosen this trail, as it provides whoops, jumps, sand, off camber corners, it's a great place for me to get my head around this bike. The first run down the track and the front forks fall through the stroke. Time for some adjustment. How good is this bike? I mean, straight out of the box, we've been doing these little jumps down here. The suspension is really good, straight out of the box. I mean, the bike has a curb weight. That means fuel full, all fluids, 229 kilograms. Wait, it's amazing. The handling of the bike's good. The only thing letting it down for me are the tires. But that's a, that's a no deal. I mean, that's, a, that's an easy thing to fix. You just go and buy new tyres. But what I'd love to do on a couple of those uh, jumps just a minute ago when I really got it launched, the forks just just touched uh, bottoming out. And I'd like to just tighten up the, the suspension a bit. So hopefully, Clubby, you reckon there's a, a key there for me? There's a, if I go in here somewhere. Yeah, pop that seat. There? That there? Yeah, put it in there. Turn it to the right. Yeah. And okay, go to the back piece. Now you should feel that that cable releases the rear piece of the seat. Okay. Right. And you've got to pull it up from the front. Up from the front. Yeah, and then lift the rear. All together. Right. Okay. Now. There you go. World's longest supplied screwdriver. Oh wow. And a handle and an Allen key as well, mate. So don't say you don't get a tool kit with the Africa Twin. You get tools there, tool to get it out, and you need iron fingers. Oh, hang on. Yeah, oh. get the Allen key. Can you pull the Allen key and pop yeah. it with that? Pop it. Perfect. Right. That's good. Because I, know, I think this suspension, just straight out of the box, I think is going to be fine for me. I think it's a, it's been massively upgraded since the very earlier models, eh? Which Mate. were notoriously. I yeah. So, yep. Okay, so on the Honda, so it's rebound up the top and compression down the bottom. It's my tool, tool of choice, that and the hammer. Now, it says hard is that way. So, one, two, three, four. I'm going to go four. Yep. And I think. <coughs> Two, three. But I can't get over how good the suspension is straight Oh, for that, box. mate. And, and you're hitting them. No, I'm not. Like, you're not, not shy about launching the big bus. No. One. Two. One. Two. Meanwhile, I might just adjust my electronic suspension by going from one helmet to two oh. on preload. Might even wind up a little more damping as well. Okay. I'd love to see you adjust the main rider seat as well, Dave, while we're here. No, we're not doing that. But it. we've only heard, got a day. I've heard rumours about that. <laughs> this is an IQ test for a... Oh, no. That's it. We're in. We're in. Now, you're telling me, so this goes in that way... I'd turn it the other way. If, I was, if I was riding that bike, I'd run it the other way around. It could be very uncomfortable. I'm really looking forward to this. I think um, 
I'm really surprised with the suspension. I, I'll be frank, you know, everyone's telling me, oh, the suspension's soft on these. Well, not on the 2022 model. I'd have to say, I'm... Mate, if I can do that on this bike, I'm happy. That, that'll do me. Alrighty. So, back on the track and I'm happy with the adjustments. On the rear, I've wound up the preload and don't touch anything else. On some bikes, clickers don't make that much of a difference, but on the Honda, I could dial the bike in perfectly for what I wanted. At the end of the day, I don't want to go any harder than this in the bush. I'm confident now I could ride this bike straight off the showroom floor with the suspension that it has and not have to do anything further. With the great foundation stone of a 21-18 inch wheel combination, the dirt handling of this bike is a strong point. Combine that with solid steering and frame geometry and the bike feels stable on a range of surfaces, particularly sand. My bike had road bias tyres, so that's saying something. Imagine how good it would be with the more dirt oriented tyres. Engine power delivery is ideal for the dirt. It builds quickly from 1800 revs, so great for power sliding, but also great for taking on tricky technical stuff. First gear is a little on the tall side, and I found myself occasionally using the clutch to get around obstacles, which is no big deal, and the engine carried me through. If I was buying this bike, I would pay the additional $400 for a quick shifter. Oh no. This has a familiar flavour to it around here. Well, I've got to say, Dave, are you going to check the depth this time? <laughs> Any chance you're going to get wet boots and a wet body set of kneecaps, mate? Are we going to go over the 21-inch front wheel? Uh, I think it's subsided since the big wet, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, La Nina has moved on, Dave. La Nina, La Nina has moved on. La Nina. All right, let's cross our fingers, Clubby. In we go. Dive, dive, dive. The bike eats up the smoother dirt roads for breakfast. The deep burbling exhaust note reminds you that if you want to get going you can, but the bike is equally as happy to cruise along and soak up the scenery with you. The same goes for those tarred country roads, its road manners are good and the grunty engine allows you for some playtime if you want. The short windshield surprises me as to how it keeps the wind turbulence at bay. The 400km loop is looking good for the Honda. But there is an emerging issue, fuel anxiety. Fuel anxiety is real. We're down to two bars. I was just down to one in a minute ago. We've got a fair way to go. I'm gonna be extremely light. According to the bike, fuel economy is coming in at 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres. So that's a combination of 100 or so kilometres of freeway and blacktop balanced with some dirt riding and being pretty loose with that throttle. This standard bike has a fuel capacity of 18.8 litres, so the theoretical range at this rate of fuel usage is around 330 kilometres to the tank. For the types of adventure riding I do, I prefer a range closer to 400 k's. Fortunately, there's another model of the bike called the Adventure Sports with a 24.8 litre tank which on those fuel figures would have about 440 k's range. So my fuel anxiety has been abated. We have fuel. Nothing worse than being up on Yengo Trail. You get down to your last bar of fuel. So in she goes. This is not our only problem. My chain is loose. And there's loose, and then there's loose. So, we'll get fuel first, and then hopefully we can get hold of one of my favourite tools, the <laughs> shifter. Hey Dave, how about that chain? Well, 
well, it's a little bit loose. Seems to have a bit of slack in it, brother. A bit of stretching's going on today, I think. And I think it was when you were riding it and power sliding. Everything. That's where it'll be. That's exactly what it'll be. Yeah. Because I forgot to change gears, see, Dave? I thought I was on the auto. I did everything in first gear. 1,700,000 RPM, mate. All right. So this is a shifter. Um, I rang Clive. And what did he say? He said, oh, Darcy will have a shifter with him. Just use that. I did now, the million dollar question is, some mechanic tighten this up to fucking... Oh no, yeah, you're right. It'll be rattled on there. Someone... I'll be very careful with the swing arm, Dave. Can you get it? <coughs> oh, you're kidding me. Yep, there she goes. Nice, mate, nice. When do, you, when do you see on the tools club? This is just unacceptable. Don't go too loose. No, it's it's tight as. Yeah. These are nice tools, do they? Now they're titanium. Yeah. If you drop them, they fall upwards. They're that light, okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm picking them up there, and I'm thinking, shit. I've got to say, this off-road ABS is giving me a few scares. It's it's um, not as sophisticated as some of the later model bikes that we've um, tested lately. It's a bit scary coming into, into corners. We, I, I guess, you know, the bar has been set pretty high now in terms of um, ABS and traction control. We're heading home after our first decent ride in the dirt. I've enjoyed riding the standard model. I'm feeling optimistic about this bike and what it has to offer adventurers who are dirt oriented. The standard model has impressed me straight off the showroom floor with a responsive engine and solid handling in a range of riding conditions. I'm starting to think about what it would be like to punch out some big dirt miles on this bike day after day. The standing and seated ergos are perfect for me. The short windshield is surprisingly protective of the rider and the seat is comfortable. But the standout feature is the suspension and dirt handling. I can take it on the rough stuff but it still provides great trail feel with suspension soft and compliant enough in the first part of the stroke so it wouldn't wear you out on long gravel road stretches. The fuel range of the standard model bothers me west of the Great Divide and I'd prefer 400 k's range and this bike only has around 330. I still haven't got my head around the electronics. In comparison to its opposition, the language and actions needed by the rider to manipulate traction control, ABS, engine braking and all that stuff is way too complicated. Its opposition does that so much better. And while we're on electronics, the bike's off-road ABS system has fallen behind a number of its competitors. Off-road ABS on some bikes of comparable price is now outstanding and intuitive. There is significant room for improvement on the Africa Twin. With torrential rain for a week, Clubby and I decide to keep the bikes warm and dry and have a talk about them in the garage. We reflect on the shallow creek crossings we rode a couple of days earlier, with some of them currently in excess of two metres underwater. Honda's Africa Twin. Now how good is some of the heritage that comes with these, um, these latest generation adventure bikes? Especially the big capacity bangers like these ones. That Africa Twin name that goes all the way back to the 80s uh, with Honda's participation in the, uh, the mighty Parry Dakar Rally. They peeled off four big wins at their first full factory effort attempts back then and then pretty much pulled out of the sport, pulled out of the big adventure bike market until now the last sort of half, last half decade or so when everyone's piled back in to adventure bikes. We've got two of the adventure, two Honda Africa twins this time. We picked them up oh, just over a week ago down at Fraser Motorcycles new dealership down at the northern beaches close to us down at Brookvale. We were looking them over and Dave said, hey, you take that one. That one there, that's the hamburger with the lot. That's you, Clubby. You take that one. And that's it. So that's what I've got. He's got the Africa Twin standard model, we call that, which he'll talk about in a moment. Me, I landed the key to this one. 
Adventure Sports DCTES model, this one's called, and it's the very top of the tree in, in a pretty extensive range of Africa twins. Now what sets this one apart from the other standard model, we use that name again, this one's got the dual clutch technology transmission. So that means you climb aboard, your left hand, it's got nothing to grab, there's no clutch lever. There is a lever over there, but it's a parking brake. Well forward where you can't grab it by mistake, but just bear that in mind, don't grab it by mistake. Then you look down, put your foot up on the left peg, there's no gear lever there. So yeah, it's all a bit of a foreign concept. Instead, up here on the right switch block, you've got buttons marked A and M, auto manual, and then you have a D and S mode switch, and that's the drive and sport mode switch for when you're using the DCT setup. It's pretty different to ride with. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but that's the big cutting edge difference between these two bikes in terms of technology. But along with that, you get a lot more as well. Taller, adjustable screen. We've got cornering driving lights as well on the bike. We've got uh, electronic adjustable to show a suspension that come with it as well. And of course, the other big thing is the larger fuel tank. This one's packing 24.8 litres, which is six litres more than the fuel tank on the standard Africa Twin, so a lot more range. That's well over another 100 kilometres of range there in general conditions. It's an interesting ride, this one. The DCT, it plays with your mind, for sure, right from the minute you roll out of the garage the first time. Um, the electronic adjustability is brilliant, as it is on most of these big bikes that have it. But of course, all of that technology comes at a price, and for this one, you're looking at about, about 31 and a half grand right away you know, which is up there, it's not as high as some, it's a lot more than others, and of course with this bike, it's the same scenario as we always say when you're comparing to other ones, compare apples to apples in terms of specifications. Ergonomics on the, on the uh, adventure sports, it's the first thing you notice, and we're going to do a lot of this today, is compare these two bikes when we're talking about them. It's bigger up here in the forward midsection of the bigger, wider tank of course. But it's actually really rideable. The actual area where you, you stand, spend most of your time standing off-road, is actually reasonably slim for a big bike and for a 24.8 litre fuel tank. The other point with the Ergos is the seat is adjustable. The standard height is 870 mils. You can lower it down on, on the bike for just in, in its adjustable position by 20 mils to 850. I've got to say, but it's a mind bender trying to do that the first time, just with all the different little catches and, and hooks you've got to make lined up correctly to do it. It's not a quick process the first couple of times you're trying to do that. And I believe you can also get a, a lowering link and lowering kit for the bike to make it even lower. The Ergo's but are good, really comfortable, really protective. There's a lot of protection here from the front end when you're just pounding out long miles, touring miles sitting down. The adjustment of the screen, you've got a fair, fairly good range there. Hey, but but it's manual adjustment. You know, some other bikes in this class these days have got electronic adjustment on their screens or just a single one-handed quick adjustment. So a little bit more fiddly, but ergonomically, I'd rate the thing really comfortable and really appropriate for bashing out big miles, which is what you do on an adventure bike. Standing position's good as well, and I think what we're gonna, we'll comment on both of these bikes is there's a lot of dirt heritage with these Africa Twins. You know, Honda even make a point that the chassis is developed from their 450 rally bike. Um, it's common, uh, swing arm's common to, uh, across to that bike as well. I, I like the stand-up Ergos. It's a big bike, like I always say, but 21-inch front wheel, so it really pays to get your weight forward over the front end of the bike, get that front wheel in the ground, grip and driving through when you want technical turns and cornering. But of course, then also in sand and soft ground, and we hit some of that on, on riding these bikes, you need to get your weight back and let the front end have its head as well. But no, overall handling and stand-up ergos on this bike, yeah, I, I really like it. I'm five foot ten, fits me like a glove. So the Africa Twin, uh, what is it? Just under 1100 cc's, inline twin cylinder motor. Uh, they, they gave it an extra 100 or so cc's a couple of years ago. Look, it's not the, you know, 105 horsepower or so, I think it punches out in around 105 newton metres of torque as well. Not the most outrageously powerful beast in this big litre plus sort of category of adventure bikes. But the thing about the motor and the power delivery, just usable. That's what I've really liked about it. And of course, with these bikes, like, like 
all of these big bikes nowadays, you've got multiple riding modes to choose from. There's four standard modes on the Africa Twin, plus you can then customise two user modes. So you've got a lot of optional adjustment there. Uh, you can change modes on the fly. Uh, you can get in and then uh, finally detail and adjust again aspects of the riding modes. Look, I, I like the motor, really liked it, really comfortable and really rideable, I think is the description I'd use for this one, compared to some of the bigger, slightly larger capacity big bikes that can be overbearing in the engine department for sure if you don't select modes that tone down the power delivery. But no, again, I give the Africa Twin big score, good score in terms of its motor and being fit for purpose for what you do with these big adventure bikes. Electronics. Now there's a simple description that I can give the electronics on this model, on the, uh, on the Adventure Sports DCT ES, as we give it the full name again. Think of Flight Deck Dreamliner 777. Like, man, I know D Dave will have imagery of this. The left switch block. I don't know that I've seen as many buttons, toggles and controls on, on a single switch block before. There are just zillions of them. And with the DCT model, you get a few more buttons over here on the right side to drive the transmission setup. I've got to say, it's just a head spin to start with. Like, we just climbed on the bikes raw down at the bike dealership when we collected them. Man, and on this one, mate, I was just happy to find drive mode on the DCT, get out in the traffic, not run into something thinking that it wouldn't stop of its own accord or change down, not store the lights when I take off. But it's... It's just a lot. It's a lot of techno gadgetry there to get your head around. Okay, here we are a week later. Yeah, I've mostly got my head around it. And the thing that you should also take on board with this bike is this, it's got a great big 6.5 inch TFT screen. It's also a touch screen. So you can actually drive a lot of the setup there from the screen of the bike prior to then heading off for your ride. Um, I'd, I'd suggest take the time for sure. Uh, study not only the manual that, you know, that comes with the bike, study also a stack of online video presentations that guys, well both Honda and also public riders have made themselves to help explain just how much electronic gadgetry you've got to play with this bike. Um, there's a lot, I keep saying that, but again it's all about the end experience, riding experience isn't it? and uh, put it to use and experiment with it. You've paid the bucks for it, use it, try it. You know, I, I think you'll f a lot of us will find that we prefer different settings, which that's just the part of riding, isn't it? We're all different in how we ride. The only other additional like negative that I'd say about all that switch gear, it's not backlit. So we were out in the boonies the other night, got dark, man, you've got all these buttons and toggles over here, you can't see them in the dark, you know? So you're going by, literally by feel, so obviously the, the more time, more, more effort and experience you put into knowing what button or what toggle does what is important, isn't it? A lot of electronics, but like on all these big bikes, just learn how to put it to best use for what you want it to do. So, the, so this bike, it, it packs just over 200 mils of suspension travel at each end. It's shower, it's good stuff, it's quality stuff for sure, and it's electronically controlled. So that means it's, the setup is it, it's, it, it's adaptive and reactive and interactive as you're riding the bike. It's making all sorts of adjustments as you go. Plus, of course, you have the option of adjusting the various parameters that not only go into the standard riding modes, like you've got four levels of preload that are, that are varied as, as you want, dependent upon your load on the bike with a pillion or with luggage, etc. And then, of course, you've also got damping adjustment electronically. Um, you can get then further into the suspension setups and like adjust all those parameters by the microns with them. You know, there's so much adjustment. Um, I've got to say that the preload system works for sure. The first time we hit the dirt up there at um, the back of Wollombi the other day, we're riding off some water bars and such. Uh, a couple of times when I hit some a little bit harder, the rear end wanted to go right through the shock. Okay, it was just a simple matter with a button on the dash just going through, boosting the preload, turn around, go back and hit the same section and it was fully controlled, no more bottoming out. Um, I think the thing that makes this bike capable off-road, and, and that's one thing the Africa Twins have been known for from day one, which I think was about 2016, they just had inherently good dirt manners 
and dirt suspension. You know, the first, first early models, they were softish as well. They got a bit of a, a rep for also for some issues with the inner coatings on the fork tubes. You know, apparently that's been upgraded and improved more lately. But no, I, I like it for a big bike. And you've got to remember, this one's 250 kilos. You're punting through the sticks out there, you know? So it's a lot of bike between your legs, a lot of bike banging into the ground each time you go off obstacles and such. Uh, a lot of weight there to balance. But overall, it's a good handling, off-road capable, big adventure bike. And I think the other thing that really struck with me, we hit a few sand patches up there, which you might see in some of Dave's footage. And... For a 250 kilogram bike, where you're not, and this is the thing that this bike you have to get your head around if you just leave it in DCT, you're not using the clutch, you're not using a gear lever like you normally would. Instead, you're just twisting a throttle and then relying on it to do the rest of the work for you. And a couple of times in like soft sand sections, and they were corners, sweeping corners like twin track sand, depending upon what mode you're in, and there's so many parameters with the DCT, the thing's clicking up gears as you're going into sand. And it's kind of like you think to yourself, oh, I don't want to be going faster here, but I definitely don't want to be going slower because the thing will just plough if you back chop the throttle or go to a lower gear. And it actually was kind of doing its thing in a really randomly different way, if that makes any sense whatsoever, in terms of how this bike goes through sand. Now, it, it actually makes you go quicker in sand sections with that DCT, which that's that's a good thing, that lightens the front end, puts your weight further back, and just a really interesting experience. Um, I think we need to do more time with the DCT and in those true off-road conditions just to get a better handle on how the DCT works, because I've read so many good reports from riders about the, the DCT model off-road. But again, overall, for a 250 kilogram bike with no clutch lever, no gearbox, Hey, I enjoyed riding it in the, in, the, in the bush, mate, for sure. So, of course, you know, there's lots of little things. You know, in every bike, you, you, you're struck by idiosyncrasies on any bike you ride. Um, one thing that just detunes me about this bike, and, like, you know, it's a 31 and a half grand ride away, you know, farkled to the max, enchilada with the lot, and you just look down and you just look at those foot pegs. Okay, width that way, reasonable. Length that way, dreadful. Like... Come on, guys. It's, like, it's got so much off-road potential. It's a small thing, but a wider foot peg. Like, I've got big feet for sure, but I can feel it. I've got less than half my foot on the foot peg any time I'm trying to punt this thing through the sticks, you know? So that's one point that just, just grills me a bit, you know? Um, the rear rack carry grab handles, pillion grab handles on the back. Really handed feature that that's, it's there. That's standard and included. They also come with a centre stand, which haven't been fitted to these bikes, but you get a centre stand included in the package. And otherwise, the, just the detailing, it's just Honda. Honda have always been great finish, fit, build. And the detailing on this one, the colour, the tricolour scheme, that's really grown on me. Um, the screen, uh, speaking of that, is the screen is just big and easily visible. And I reckon there's something going on with the technology of the screen surface that it actually, I don't know, can't repel dust, but dust doesn't seem to, to, to foul it at all, whereas the little lower uh, LCD display gets dusted up. But the actual main TFT screen is, is always visible. Um, full handguards, wraparound handguards on it, uh, lockable fuel cap, all those sort of things. But... Yeah, it's, it's just a good package and it's Honda, you know, two-year warranty comes with it, St stacks of Honda dealers everywhere, always has been, and yeah, it's, it's yeah, a nice package, it is a nice package for sure. So does this need much modification to be an Australian adventure bike? It's actually one of those bikes that it doesn't need a lot of modification. Um, you know, the heater grips are already there on this one, you know, like everything's there. Um, we've got Anarchy Wild tyres on this one. I don't think they'd be standard fitment, so we need to check that. But yeah, a set of knobbies on it, obviously, of course. Yeah, I would definitely need bigger foot pegs. The bash plate, yeah, it's, well, we haven't tested that yet because it's got good ground clearance. That's another point. There's about 250 mil of ground clearance down there, which is handy for sure. Uh, maybe a little bit more engine protection there. You notice the size of the DCT transmission cases on the right-hand side of the motor. Yeah, it's definitely a bit more bulkier than the stock one for sure. But, like, overall, there's not crazy amounts of work that would have to be done to this beast. 
Um, you know, their suspension's electronic, easy to adjust. You know, you might want to personalise your luggage rack back here a bit further. I mean, it's all dialed in and set up with, with, with uh, clip-ons and fastenings for, for hard luggage that Honda sell, genuine, uh, genuine luggage. But as an overall big mile tourer, mate, there's not a lot you have to do to it after you roll it off the showroom floor. Well, Clubby, that was pretty comprehensive. Now it's time for me to talk about my experience with the standard, the, the base model. Is nice. it really that base? That's the thing. Well, there's a lot of differences. There's a lot of technology in this. And, you got, and I think the thing is this is six, about $6,500 more expensive than that one. Mm. And, I mean, that's a big chunk of change and a big lump of technology. And I kind of wonder how much of this technology is really, really necessary for the majority of adventure riders out there? That's the big question that's in my mind. Well, I'll have a chop at answering it. <laughs> Good one. That's what we want to hear. So Clubby's on the class over there and I'm on the Povo pack. Well, <laughs> but I don't think that's a good description of this. This is the standard Africa Twin. It's as, as uh, Clubby said, it's about six and a half thousand dollars less, and so you don't have all the doodads, but you've still got that Honda heritage, and that dirt handling on this bike is one of its strengths straight out of the box. But first thing we'll talk about is ergonomics. Uh, seated position on this bike for my height at 178 centimeters or five foot ten inches tall is excellent. I can sit on this bike all day. Seat's comfortable. It's got a, a narrow. Uh, piece here where the uh, tank joins to the to the rear of the bike excellent for standing um, and excellent for sitting could ride on this all day every day uh, the handlebar uh, distance from a body is spot on so that's really good with this one it's got a, a lower screen uh, than clubbies and it's non adjustable I didn't get any buffeting from this screen and the wind was pushed way past the edges of my, my shoulders. So again, I could ride all day with that screen. However, I would say that I did ride Clubby's home on the freeway and I did appreciate the bigger screen. But having said that, um, I was really happy with that. Engine power delivery on the bike. It comes on from about 1.8, 1,800 revs and it's really thick and luscious for those first couple of thousand. And the reason I like that is you can really power slide this bike and flick the, and use that power to turn the motorcycle. And uh, I really enjoyed that. You know, it's an interesting size, 1100. It's not, you know, the, the, the super tourer and it's not the, what we call mid range adventure, you know, that 800, 900, it kind of sits in between, but it does a good job of that. Um, I think the weight of the bike is 229 kilograms, so it's about 20 kilograms less, and it has less fuel uh, than the DCT version. Uh, now, it's interesting with the fuel, that became a bit of an issue when we'd been riding uh, up in the mountains. I was starting to hunt around with fuel. I was on the, on the very precipice of getting fuel anxiety, so I was looking over it enviously at Clubby in terms of uh, having that extra capacity. So that's something you'd have to watch if you were going on those uh, longer adventures out, out west. Suspension on the bike. Well, I gave the bike a fair bit of stick and uh, jumped it like quite significant dif uh, distances, you know, over eight metres sometimes. And the first couple of times I did that, uh, the suspension uh, on the front fell through the spine fell through the stroke but the great thing is suspension rear and front can be as fully adjustable and so just mucking around with a few clickers I upped uh, compression and rebound up four from standard on the front I wound the preload up and fiddled with the uh, compression and put two clicks up on compression on the rear and the bike was amazing it, it, the, it responded to those adjustments perfectly uh, I think the suspension for a mid-range bike, I've ridden a few lately, the suspension standard on this bike is really good. And I couldn't see myself doing anything with that suspension and just ride it straight off the showroom floor. I thought it was excellent. Yeah, what I'll do, I'll just sit on the bike. A lot of people want us to sit on the bike uh, just to get an appreciation of that. So there you go. 
very comfortable just on the balls of my feet. Uh, and the standing position oh, came off the stand, but it's, it's perfect for me. I, I really like it. Motorcycle companies are really developing their language, particularly in the last two years, in terms of how the motorcyclist, the rider, tunes in the bike to what they want. They're, you know, they're jam-packed with electronics, and this bike um, has a range of different traction control settings and ABS settings and a whole range of things, power settings. The way in which Honda does that, it's quite a complex language. Like if I was to count it up now, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 buttons on that side, and then a further um, one, two, three, four buttons on that side. So, you know, it's a little bit distracting and you've got to learn the language of the bike. Uh, I'm still, I still don't have my head around it uh, completely, so I'm not getting the best out of the bike as yet. It's, I, I know you can do some of the um, uh, changes to settings through the TFT screen. I still haven't um, mastered that yet. So as we get to know the bike a little bit better, I'm, I'm sure that I'll be able to delve into those settings and tune the bike the way I want it fairly quickly. All right, Chloe, let's turn this baby on and get our head around this electronic display. Now, it takes a while, doesn't it, to do its yeah. thing here. Mm. Not that you have to wait for it before you ride the bike, of course. You can you just, you just get take on off. and go. Yeah, you can just... But we do have a safety warning. There's indemnities yeah. to sign. Yeah. We want to be fully legal. OH and S best practice, you know. So let's just... So this is it. The rider is responsible for safe operation of this vehicle, use this system every time. Like, I'll be a kilometre down the road before that happens. Now, Clubby, we've got these myriad of switches here. Let's just count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen, fourteen switches I count. And then on the other side, you've got a couple more cruise control and a function one. It's in comparison to the latest bikes to hit the market, it's very complex. And uh, it's taking us a while to get our heads around, isn't it? Oh, it's, and, and it's multiple switches for elementary functions. Like the one I talk about, and it just does me in, on, on the DCT, it comes with heater grips. But you've got to turn the heater grips on on one switch block, the right, on yeah. one of the function buttons, and then to adjust the heat on yeah. the other side, on the other switch block. Like, huh, what, why? Yeah. Uh, and then not only can you drive a lot of it through the, the toggles, the left, right, up yeah. and down, on the left switch block, you can also do a lot of it on screen with your yeah. with a clean finger or, or, or touch so sensor. I'm, I'm just getting my head around that. So can I change the mode? Yeah, yep. change the mode. So look at this one, wheelie control. One, two, three. All I've got to know now, Cubby, is which is the biggest wheelie and which stops me wheeling. Yeah, but we'll, you, we'll read the want, manual on that. You'll want maximum permission for wheelie <laughs> control for sure. All right, but most importantly, you've got traction control there and you can, you can dial that down. Um, uh, to, to uh, one is the lowest level for traction control, you see yourself. But, you know, going along at 100 kilometres an hour, do you reckon you could pull that off and, and dial up your traction control or you reckon you'd miss? Uh, I reckon that could be a little bit tricky and you'd want to make sure your glove tip, your fingertip is really <laughs> clean and really working, wouldn't you? On a cold winter's yeah. morning I, with a big thick glove, I don't know if you get it, uh, you can turn off your, um, I'm cancelling the um, ABS, Oh my God, would you really like to cancel that? Yeah, yes, sign please. Sign that indemnity form, Dave, just... before you go any further. Yeah, yeah. So there's more to it, though, you oh, were saying yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. the other trick, um, touch the top centre of the screen, and then wow. that puts you into a thousand submenus right. of all the other different tech that you can play with. Mm. Um, connectivity, of course, uh, media settings for you playing your tunes and that, settings yeah. for everything. Um, you know, a real uh, easy one, just display. go into the display. Uh, you can choose your mode for display, and there's different dis what okay, is display. Okay, so if you go to one. urban, if yep. you go to urban, so I, I can I can make that one of those displays. Yeah. Can, okay. There's gold, silver, and bronze. Right. Gold is the is the window that it's, has maximum information. It's just everything as everything, we can see yeah, there now. Right. Or I can simplify, yeah, just cut taco, it back to taco fuel fuel and, and other, settings. Yep. Most or I can go povo. Yeah, right or, or, back to just a taco. Just a taco and the traction control and a bit yep. of fuel. Yeah, yeah, gold, silver and bronze, they're cool. Yeah. And you can p apply yeah. those to each of the mode displays. Yeah. Um, 
go back. And, you know, there's just yeah, the brightness and display of yeah. the mode. Yeah. Uh, favorite information that what will display in the in the, yes. the block on the left side yeah. there with all your fuel and trip meter, fuel economy, etc. There's just mountains of stuff here. And it's interesting they've with. kept with this the simple screen though, haven't they? Yeah, well, well that's there all the time to always display your mo uh, your speed, speed. Your, your trip meter, and your and gear selector. Inspection. That's just a yeah, yeah. LC dis display yeah. and a few of the warning lights, you know, for oil pressure, traction control, ABS, etc. Yeah. And that yeah, so it's always it's fixed yeah. in what it displays. Yeah. Then you have the big TFT screen for yep. what you want to display, and you can choose from. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but it's like it, and, and you're bang on the money day. It's just not as easily usable right off the bat compared to some other uh, no. models of a bike for sure and other brands. Oh. It's an interesting thing. I haven't ridden the DCT yet in any strength and certainly not on the dirt. And I really want to see if there's the value there because I'm completely happy with this. I mean, I could ride this out of the showroom floor now and I'd be pretty confident just change the tyres and I'd be pretty good to go for an adventure. Uh, yeah, I had a look at the, the bash plate down there. Some of the mountings, you know, I, I, if there was one thing I'd do, I'd get a decent bash plate for the bike. But even so, its ground clearance is quite high uh, straight off the bat. It comes with this uh, tail rack, which is really good. And this bike also comes uh, with a centre stand, which wasn't fitted prior to us receiving the bikes from Honda. So where does it sit in terms of that mid-range? Well. I expected, I'll be frank with you, um, having ridden an Africa Twin before, I expected the suspension to be soft and uh, a little bit too pliable and, you know, I knew the engine would be good and I knew the handling would be good, but I thought I'd be disappointed with the suspension. I'm not disappointed with the suspension. It's excellent, straight off the showroom floor. And there's really not much to do to this bike to turn it into your adventure tourer. One of the things though, with this size tank and heading west of the Great Divide, I think um, you're gonna start getting fuel anxiety sometimes. Uh, we, haven't, uh, we haven't as yet tested the fuel range of the bikes, gave them real world tests. We will do that in the coming weeks. Um, one of the things that's completely stuffed us at the moment is the weather, it's been pouring rain. But we thought we'd just give you an update on the bikes and, and where we're at and um, more things to do We've got to get our heads around these uh, traction control and um, settings on this bike. The same with the DCT. I haven't ridden the DCT and Clubby hasn't had this one on the dirt either. And, you know, it'd be nice to, to leave this review just kind of hopefully uh, giving you information about whether it's worth that extra um, six, six and a bit thousand dollars for the top shelf one and, and who would buy that as in comparison to the standard bike. So we continue the test and hopefully the rain stops and we'll get back out in the dirt.